Hello, Pastor Gilbert. Uh, today we have with us the new senior pastor. Of the Victoria younger Island. senior pastor. <laughs> the younger. <laughs> Uh, by how many years po? <laughs> Let's not talk about it anymore. <laughs> but so what's important is that the Pastor Ariel said, I'm the younger. Ah, okay. Okay, Pastor Ariel yeah. naman po <laughs> Alright. And hello everyone. Welcome to the Leading Together podcast where we take an inside look at how we develop a leadership culture at Victory and Every Nation Philippines. I'm Ryan. I'm part of our staff in Victory and Every Nation Philippines. And today, we'll talk about changes and transitions. Exciting. Uh, exciting. I th- I'm sure everyone has gone through change and transitions. And of course, Pastor Jansen, just recently, uh, you've went through this big transition. Well, yeah, I, uh, they just uh, prayed for me, installed me uh, last Sunday. So I'm coming in as the senior pastor of Victory Alabang. And Victory Alabang is what? Uh, 25, 25 years? 25 this years. Year. This, year. this year. Can you imagine? Yeah. God is good. Yeah. How many transitions have Victory Albang gone gotten into already by this time? Well, so far I'm the third senior pastor of okay. Victory Albang. So two transitions. Two, two transitions. transitions. The first one. Pastor, <coughs> pastor Ariel has been the longest okay. senior pastor in Metro Manila. Yes. Wow. Uh, How many years? Twenty-one years. I was pastor of Victory U Belt for eleven, but he's twenty-one. So wow. this is quite big for Victory Alabang right. for yeah. <coughs> Pastor Ariel. Pastor Jensen, walk us through your experience of the transitions you've had. You've had several transitions. Yes. Uh, of course, our pastors and staff know you, know what, uh, where you've been. One of the hardest things in life, I mean, there's nothing constant in the world except change. Yet, as constant as change is, change is still hard. <laughs> I don't know how about you, Ryan, myself. Every time there's change, there's transition, it's quite hard to get a place where you're comfortable already, and then sometimes mm. you get comfortable yeah. and then change happens again. <laughs> I mean, if you've had several kids, the right? <laughs> transition ka ng isa, tapos medyo comfortable ka na, you yeah. feel like okay ka na, may transition ka pangalwa agad, pangatlo. Um, how has it been with you, Pastor Jansen? Well, yeah. Well, I was telling Pastor Gilbert, we were having a conversation a while ago, no? if you remember. This is my fifth transition Meaning, as a senior pastor. Wow. So, it involves me. Meaning, it's either I'm uh, I'm the one being installed as the senior pastor mm-hmm. or I'm the one passing it on. So, this is the fifth one. And w- when Pastor Gilbert mentioned about, oh, nga, di ba, may discomfort talaga din. I think any change, it should have a discomfort. Mm. Because we're moving forward from our milieu in the ministry Change is always precipitated by us moving forward towards God's mission. Mm-hmm. So when there is change, it means that we're moving closer. Mm-hmm. We're doing more for God's kingdom. And there's always a discomfort there, rightfully so. It's hard, but in the same way, I think it's a good sign when there's a discomfort. If we get too comfortable to any change, I think there must be there might be a problem over that. So, what's the hardest for you, Jansen? What's the hardest part of transition for you? The transition itself, Pastor Gilbs. Because you know, sometimes uh, the decision to change is instant. I mm-hmm. learned that from you. It's <clears throat> you decide in it; it's instant. Mm-hmm. But the transition, it's the process. Mm-hmm. The change is the starting point. But the transition process is the part where you, you or your department or your ministry, mm-hmm. you're moving towards stability. And that transition process is the one that we really have to navigate with mm-hmm. personally, mm-hmm. corporately, the team, the department. And there are a lot of factors involved in any transition. Mm-hmm. A very good point that you're trying to make, <clears throat> Pastor Jansen. You preached this uh, in one of our staff convergences where he broke down change and transition. Because mm-hmm. many times, change is change. And <laughs> mind that in change, boom, that's it. And then how do you cope with change? How do you deal with change? But then breaking it down to two, there's change and there's the transition. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's very helpful, knowing that they're two separate things. 
Okay. Kasi paminsan, nahihirapan tayo doon sa transition not yeah. with the change as, as you've said. Diba? Yung, but if you just think that it's change, yung nahihirapan ka, then that's where some all kinds of problems come up. Uh, the one who's initiating the change can't understand you. Bakit ka nahihirapan? Ikaw lang, you can't understand yourself until you begin to understand that change is different from transition. Mm-hmm. So, brilliant. Yeah, and that's... when you say change is different from transition, but you're also saying that there cannot be change without transition. Those are always together. Or is it yes. like... Yes, I, I, I think they're <clears throat> separate, but they are connected. Mm-hmm. They're connected, but they're distinct. Mm-hmm. So it's good to have that distinction. Just for, for context, Pastor Jansen, I think this is uh, no, possibly the hardest question. Uh, and a lot of I'm sure a lot of people want to know, what were you doing before Victory Alabang? Before coming in as a senior pastor, yes. yeah. Well, like I was the triathlon. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, I saw no, photos. Not, not, <laughs> not what you're doing, lang. Baka sabi mo nag the triathlon ka. Okay, I was from the Victory Alabang. What was your role yes, before yes, uh, coming yes. in as senior pastor, Victory Alabang? Oh well, uh, I was part of the executive team, the team of Pastor Gilbert, mm-hmm. and I was the. The <laughs> he was overseeing all of Victory Metro Manila. Okay. So okay. for for those <laughs> sorry, yeah. thank you na pansin mo na hirap na hirap. Ako yun na So uh, for those who are not uh, familiar, Victory Metro Manila is one church mm-hmm. with different congregations. As of now, we have nineteen congregations. Nineteen, yes. So previous to Pastor Jensen. Pastoring uh, Victory Alabang, he was overseeing all the 19 congregations. Wow. Then now you're going into back to the local church. Back you you used to pastor a one congregation. Pastor one congregation. Yes. Then yes. you headed the 19. Yeah. Uh-huh. Then now you're going back to the local church. Who uh-huh. better to <laughs> lead the. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, see, Pastor Gilbert got fed up. With me filing leaves to, you know, to do my triathlon races. So, sabi niya, Sige, siguro mas madali kang mag-leave pag nandiyan ka sa local no, church. I was trying so. not to be obvious, but <laughs> obviously, it became obvious. <laughs> so, no, so but, is this transition difficult? And what makes it difficult, if it is? Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for asking that question. No? And it's always the concern of people, eh? Uh, is that it's change difficult? Is transition difficult? Certainly, it is. Mainly because transition involves people. Mm. It's not just a management principle. Management is about systems. But when you talk about transition and changes, it's not management, it's leadership. And when you talk about leadership, it's about people. Mm-hmm. And we're not just any ordinary Tom, Dick, and Harry organization. We're talking about the church. We're leading people. We're people in ministry. We have missionaries. Mm -hmm. So when we say change and transition, leadership is entailed. Rightfully so, it should be difficult Mm -hmm. because we're talking about the people of God. But then again, when we say difficult, I think given what we need to look after or what we need to seek after is how can change be more meaningful Mm -hmm. and purposeful? So that's when you, let's say, for example, okay, coming in as the senior pastor of Alabang, given ha, difficult. Mm-hmm. But how can this be meaningful? So the first question is, God, why, are, why is this happening? Mm-hmm. I'm the senior pastor now. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to lead these people? Wow. Then I can find meaning towards that transition and the purpose of God towards that. Yeah. So given this specific example or my transition now, then I believe it somehow dissipates the concern of difficulty and it transforms it to a concern, not, e- or not, not anymore a concern, eh, but a matter of meaning and purpose under God's will. Hmm. So. Wow. Beautiful. Well, we'll go back to transition, Pastor uh, <clears throat> Jansen. And there's a beautiful picture of transition that we saw in Victor Alabang. Between Pastor Ariel and, uh, and Pastor Jansen, shout out to Pastor Ariel. Uh, but but uh, one of the things about change that makes it difficult 
apart, apart from the transition, is change always involves a sense of loss. Mm. No matter if it's a good change. Uh, think about it. You're changing from being single to being married. That's a good change mm-hmm. for you, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Good change. <laughs> but the sense of loss there is you've somehow lost right. your independence. You've lost certain things that you used to do, you can't do. So no matter how good the change is, there's a certain sense of loss. In the changes and transitions I've been to, uh, I think, I believe, fully believe, all of those are good changes mm-hmm. for me and for our movement, for the church. But I felt a sense of loss in some of those mm-hmm. changes. Kaya uh, mahirap eh. Then we go to transition and then yeah. that's where I, I'll come back. So that's what's, what makes it so difficult, that sense of loss. You, you, you mentioned the, all of those changes that you've been through are good changes. It, what, is there such a thing as a bad change? Uh, yes, when it's, uh, I think, <laughs> when it's a uh, hasty decision that's okay. not prayed about and that's not thought over and it's a bad decision mm-hmm. just all over and then you just have to go back and redo everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's such thing as a bad change. Does that like <laughs> happen <here>? Well, <laughs> Well, for me, never. Okay. All my decisions <laughs> are good, good decisions. <laughs> and good never, changes. Yeah, good changes. Oh, well, so we've never, you never. <laughs> maybe some other pastors or leaders, but for okay. us, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course it yeah. has. <laughs> like, and Los Vangeles, especially when I was a new pastor, oh my goodness. There have been decisions I made and I look back like, oh gosh, I hope I I hope I could <laughs> redo that. This, there, ha, there were times I had to redo it and then start from scratch. But there were times it was just too late and we just have to trust that God will redeem the mistakes. Mm. Yeah, that's true, no, Pastor Gilbert. In fact, in our context, despite bad changes mm-hmm. or despite bad decisions because change for us is always anchored, compelled, yeah. propelled Great. by God's mission. Great. Then let's yeah. say wow. if we make a mistake on something, yeah. then because God is sovereign Very and good. we're just doing God's will Very. and that's the intent of our yeah. hearts. Even if there's, let's say, a wrong action on mm-hmm. our part and we just read it wrong, decided it wrong, wow. well, God is God and God is powerful, God is sovereign, then He can correct things mm-hmm. like this. It's not as Beautiful, if we're yeah. stubborn and, you wow. know, God will not, sinasalba naman tayo para ating ng Panginoon. And that's the beauty of working in the ministry. Yeah. Because lahat naman tayo, yun yung isa sa mga, for me nga, one of our strengths is that lahat naman tayo pare-pareho ng iniisip. Lahat naman ang gusto natin is yung naisin at kalooban lang naman ng mm-hmm. Panginoon. At ma- I advance ang kingdom ni God. And of course, because we're humans, we're not perfect, mm-hmm. then we will definitely make mistakes. But as long as God is in charge and God is sovereign and we want to do His will, then He can just, alam mo yun, ang dali yeah. niya namang salawin talaga. And I fully believe, and I know Pastor Gilbert would agree with me, that there were wrong changes that we did, mm-hmm. wrong decisions that we did, but God made it right. Wow. Sinalo niya, Pinaganda pa niya. Yeah. Wow. Pastor Jensen, uh, you preach about <clears throat> uh, in, in one of our staff mm. convergences. And I love that preaching where you talk about some aspects of transition. Uh, that really helps me understand more and more. Not just myself during transition, but other leaders and other people, especially staff here, we're going through transition. And and if you're a staff here, and if you're a pastor, campus missionary, and we just want you to know we're thinking about you. For those of you who are in transition, change, yeah. I mean, we really, as leaders here, want to help you transition as smoothly and as quickly as you can. We're praying for you, and we're really, really wanting to do our best to make it easier for you. Uh, but Pastor Jensen... You talk about those um, factors of transition. For you, looking back in all the transitions you've ever had, has there been 
a factor there that's harder for you at a certain time and transition? Well, yes. Uh, and I would say, Pastor Gil, Mark Ryan, it would be the spiritual part. Mm. Not that we're not spiritual and we're not praying. But again, in our context, because we are a church, the enemy will not take mm. our transitions. Especially if we're saying that our transitions, our changes are moved by God in His mission. Therefore, the enemy wouldn't take it sitting down. Mm. If Jesus Christ Himself, during His transition from a preacher, minister, to Savior in Luke 22, that was in the preaching, uh, I mean, He Himself explicitly recorded by the Apostle Luke. So I mean, in Luke 22, first time, sabi niya, Satan entered Judas. Uh, Luke 22, 3. Luke 22 to, I think, verse 31 or 30. Uh, it was Jesus him, himself who said, who told Peter, Peter, mm. Satan asked me for your soul so that he would sift you like wheat. And towards the end, verse 51 of Luke mm. 22, Jesus himself said, the power of darkness has come. If si Jesus na yon, what more tayo? So, in lahat ng transition natin, we have to be aware that the enemy is wanting to thwart our changes mm. and transitions because it is for the advancement of God's kingdom. So. That's one of the things that was quite new to me. Uh, change and transition, I knew one aspect is organizational. As I've been leading this, medyo yun yung isa kong na-focus for uh, <clears throat> last years, organizational change and transition. Uh, but then slowly I, I started to understand there's an personal, emotional, relational mm-hmm. aspect to the transition. Mm-hmm. But then two new th- things, as you've been saying, uh, it should be missional. If it's uh, a change and a transition, especially in the church, it should always be fueled by the mission of God, should always be missional. But the spiritual side, the spiritual warfare side of this, mm-hmm. that transition has always had uh, an enemy, Mm-hmm. because we're trying to advance the mission of God, I would try to really thwart it. That's yeah. why it's difficult. Sometimes yeah. you just don't understand. Like, there's there's a funk that's happening in your soul. Mm-hmm. That's true. Or maybe there's a funk happening in the soul of somebody who's in transition. Or maybe not in transition, but because we're all in transition, somebody's in a... And you can't quite explain what's happening. What's mm-hmm. happening here? Or maybe it's a sickness... Uh, Big lang out of nowhere, you're sick and you're out of nowhere, it's happening. Out of nowhere, like uh, the closing doors and all that. Mm-hmm. That's when I understand. So I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Having the awareness that transition involves spiritual warfare. So for us to cover our movement, cover each other, those who are in change and transition, I think that's that's so critical. And how do you normally feel? I understand you know, that kind of attack has many different kinds of like manifestations, but how do you respond to it? Or how does a, nor- a person feel pag nandun kayo sa parang feeling ko mukha na siyang bad decision <laughs> or bad change? Maybe it causes you to doubt, is this the right move? Yeah, there. Okay, <laughs> there's spiritual attack. <clears throat> He's trying to like mess things up, yeah. right? And then he started messing in your mind, because yeah. the, de- the devil is the accuser of the brothers, mm-hmm. right? One of the main things he does is to accuse you, accuse you. And he uh, will accuse you. Ah, that transition is bad, that change is bad. Although you knew this is from God and this mm-hmm. good change, that happens. You begin to doubt yourself. You begin to have s- second guess all the things that you're doing. I think the first thing is awareness mm-hmm. that there is an enemy, that this is not just natural. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is not just, eh, hindi kasi ganyan talaga, uh, ganun siya, ganito ako. Yeah. Uh, so, if there's an awareness that spiritual war is coming, so my first response is not to give up and say, yeah, tama ka. Uh, there's a bad change, bad decision, let's just mm-hmm. not do it. So my first reaction would be, learning that, pray. I have to spend time with God in prayer. And I have... To have our team 
pray together. Like, let's discern the voice of God. Let's discern what God wants wow. us to do and how God wants us to respond. And if I can just highlight, you know, I totally agree with Pastor Gilbert. Well, the Bible says that we battle not against flesh and blood, mm-hmm. but against principalities, rulers, the authorities of this mm-hmm. dark world. Mm-hmm. Then, it's not really just us. Mm-hmm. I mean, God is with us. And we have the Holy Spirit as sent by Jesus Christ. And so, we tap on that because it's not just we don't just rely on our power. So dito papasok yung part na sinasabi ni Pastor Gilbert that God has given us His grace to be able to battle against the rulers, the powers of this dark world. And the means to that grace would be prayer, fasting, the Word of God. Another means to that grace would be the brethren itself. Kaya nga may mga times, di ba, I have to talk to Pastor Gilbert during this transition. I have to talk to Pastor Michael because that's a means for me to tap on the grace of God. If I just have a conversation, kwentuhan, coffee with Pastor Gilbert. I mean, just two weeks ago, I was talking to Pastor Tito mm-hmm. regarding this transition. It, it is a means for me to mm-hmm. access the grace of God. So. Wow. What that helps me with, the again, the, the spiritual aspect, because that's really helping me is that even moving forward, you begin to be alert. The Bible always says, when the Bible warns there's an enemy or there's this, be alert, therefore be alert, therefore be alert. So even before you institute a change or you move to a transition, you bait that in prayer. Mm-hmm. And then you're alert, you're looking for. So yung parang spiritual antenna mo, it's up. Mm-hmm. And you're thinking, is this natural or is this supernatural? And then once you sense it's supernatural, then pray against it and do something against it. So it, it sounds like you've been through a lot of these transitions, uh, Pastor Gilbert, Pastor Jansen. So I'm just, yeah. I'm curious because I'm sure you're, you're expecting this kind of like difficulty already as you are about to go through this transition. How was that process for you? What was your like disposition? Ano ba? May hesitance ba or any? Eh? You know, this is... Uh, as I've said, no, it's a good uh, picture, beautiful picture of uh, this transition. Because, of course, Pastor Jansen was leading the whole of Metro Manila, uh, so his role is there. Uh, but whenever I talk with Pastor Michael and Pastor Alab- uh, Ariel about who, who would succeed Alabang, because Victor Alabang is, is one of our OG uh, congregations, yeah. one of the most uh, uh, strategic, important congregations that we have. So we need uh, we need a man of God who would really shepherd and pastor our church there. Uh, we don't want to drop the ball on that. So they've been saying it's Pastor Jansen. So me leading in my mind, <laughs> he's leading this and then he's gonna lead this. Uh, so I was just praying and I didn't know uh, if that's from God. Mm-hmm. I didn't know if I should even tell Jansen that. Wow. And then. Jansen <laughs> called me or texted me. Uh, I have a proposal for Victor Elabang. And that's where Tuloy mo yon, Pastor Jansen, when he got to me. And he talked to me. Yeah, I, I think I remember, yeah, I mentioned it to you. I said, we tayo kasi I think it was a, I don't know what, was it a retreat? Yeah. Or a planning yeah, yeah. Uh, meeting we had. I said, can we talk? Pastor Gilbert, Pastor Michael. And because working in Metro Manila at that time, I, to a degree, I know the load of, be, of being in a national ministry. Not to mention the fact that talagang mabigat yung role ni Pastor Ariel. So, yes, na burden din ako kay Pastor Ariel. And at the same time, I was burdened for the church because doon ako galing eh, sa Alabang. Yeah. Of course, at that time, nasa Santa Rosa na ako. But since... I came to know the Lord, me and my wife. So talagang doon kami sa Alabang nang galing. So ko nako, paano na kaya yung Alabang? And if we, ano, and I've been really praying about it. So yeah. I had to talk to, ano, nahihiya pa nga ako kay Pastor Gilbert at kay Pastor Michael. Kasi, sabi ko, parang nakakaya ah, naman, di ba? Ako mag-o-offer na. Ako na lang sa Alabang. So I spoke to them. Tapos parang pigil na pigil ka pa. Sabi ko, Ang dami ko pang pasakali, ika nga, <laughs> di ba? Para ang dami kong palabo. Only to say na, 
kung talagang wala nang mag-aalabang, can I be the one to be there? Tapos natawa ako sa unang reaction ni Pastor Michael. Kung tatatandaan mo, Pastor Gil, pagsabi niya, pambira naman. Kung Ay, dati mo pa sinabi yan, ang tagal na natin mag-design. Hindi na tayo nag-isip-isip. Sabi ko, siyempre naman, alam nga naman, parang mag-self-promotion ako, sabi ko, di ba? Yeah. Kasi nga, parang ayoko magpakabida dyan. Sabi ko, pero totoo yun, sabi ko, I feel really just burdened for wow. the church. And I feel like, this is what God wants me to do. But sabi ko, I'm laying it down before you. You're my leaders. Wow. So, ayun na. And, and that's what spiritual leadership is all about. We were praying about it too. Mm-hmm. And we felt like it's Him. But sometimes, di ba, being spiritual is so nebulous sometimes. Di ba? Parang, you know it's God, but how do you know? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. But we felt like it was God. But then God was speaking to us and God was speaking to Him. So when we did the conversation, we're like, wow, this is God. God spoke to you. God spoke to us. So you're really the right the right man for the job. So that's why it's beautiful when there's spiritual leadership in these changes and transitions. Na hindi lang to yung, and I hope if you're listening to this, you've been through a change and transition. Mm-hmm. Hindi lang to yung nagising yung mga leaders <laughs> ng every nation, si Pastor Steve or the Bishop Kyle. Baguhin natin yung buhay ni Jansen and then wow. change. It is, it is hearing God. Mm-hmm. It is us wrestling with yeah, we heard God, but how about Him? How, how would this affect Him? And uh, So all of that is yeah. being wrestled upon emotionally, rationally, organizationally, but mostly spiritually. And, and I'm glad uh, it turned out okay because, again, God has been speaking. Wow. Yeah, and I think in nga, nagustuhan nyo kasi you have now a younger pastor. <laughs> God spoke. Right? Okay. <laughs> but one, another, another beautiful thing about that transition is this. So Pastor Jansen uh, got saved in Alabang. Mm-hmm. was discipled by Pastor Ayel. Pastor Ayel hired him as one of the staff, admin staff. And so for a long time, Pastor Ayel was the boss of Pastor Jansen mm. organizationally. Okay. Of course, spiritually, church, we're all brothers. Pantay-pantay tayo. Lahat tayo, same value. God values you, bro. And me and everyone else. And we can all hug. But organizationally, boss niya si Pastor Ariel for a long time. And then Pastor Ariel um, uh, asked him to be a pastor and then eventually sent him to be the senior pastor of Santa Rosa. So may time, colleagues na sila. Okay. Mm. From being boss to colleagues, parehong senior pastor. And then we asked Pastor Jansen to serve uh, as executive pastor of Metro Manila, eventually the director of Metro Manila. Then Pastor Jansen <laughs> became Pastor Ariel's boss for a time. So even though he is younger, yeah, thank you. <laughs> he became the boss of Pastor Ariel. They worked together. They worked together. And now, coming in as uh, the senior pastor, their colleagues again. Uh, so it's it's just a beautiful picture that we've seen already mm-hmm. with the Bishop's Council, yeah. with my transition. Whenever our leaders preach that it's not about titles or positions of roles, I just want to say it's not lip service. Mm-hmm. Everybody is willing to step down and say, if you're the right man for the role and the job at this time, it, we're literally, literally fine. And and it is rare to see that. Mm-hmm. And just want to, again, commend Pastor Ariel and Pastor Ariel. Shout out again, Pastor Ariel. Uh, for, for the humility, the security, uh, the godliness uh, that they have. So. Wow. Ryan, in fact, ano nga, Pastor Gilbert Ryan, I want to underscore nga, with, in all these stories, it gives us a picture of God's marvel in the culture that was built in to this to our ministry uh we can afford to change roles mm-hmm. he's the boss i'm the boss alam yan palitan because it's yes it's a role but then again behind it we're friends yeah. the relationship is anchored by true loving brethren relationships so it doesn't really matter who's the boss now i mean Pastor Gilbert is my boss. But kanina lang, 
magkaaway kami kasi Lakers siya. Tapos, <laughs> ano ako, Golden State. Pero we're friends. Ah, friends. Walang friends. ano friends eh. It's bro. anchored. Peace, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> anchored yeah. by relationships. Yeah. And yun well, nga, we praise and thank God for that culture that He has allowed to be fostered mm-hmm. in our leadership, in our church, in our ministry. Another thing I want to highlight when it comes to changes and transitions, because changes and transitions usually affect your role and your assignment and your tasks, mm-hmm. right? But what I, again, what I appreciate with the culture that we have working with men of God like Pastor Jansen is that we're, what we're really concerned about is to be faithful mm-hmm. with what God has given us as a role or assignment at this season. Right. Because we know that the role is different from a calling. Calling doesn't change, but roles, tasks, positions change all the time. And if there's one thing that God expects of us, it's never about who's best, who's better, who's number mm-hmm. one, who's greater. I mean, the disciples, apostles had that. Jesus had to rebuke them because it's not about greatness or better. It's about faithfulness to your role right. and task at a given point in time. So as long as I'm faithful with this, then God is pleased with me. Wow. That's where the security comes in. I might be the senior pastor. I'm faithful. God would say, well done. Or I might be the junior janitor. Mm-hmm. And God says, you're faithful. Well done. Yeah. And that's what I think and ideally we live for. Um, wow. Beautiful. Uh, that, that's great, Pastor Gilbert. I think at least from someone who leads as well, it sort of also takes away any kind of like insecurity because you're grounded on not yourself, yeah. not your own abilities and not uh, what you can do. At the same time, for those who are under leadership, there's that trust in God. Uh, and there, there's that like, um, I'm trying to see you differently. You're not trying to be a bad boss. You're not trying to do this or do that. You're just trying to be faithful to what God has called you to do. And I will be able to serve you better yes. thinking of you like that. Yes. And there's no grasping for position. Yeah. Like, it's like not because you wanted that yeah, position. You're just I'm being faithful to what God has called so you to. So that I can be there or the boss is just putting me down so that I can get there. Hopefully, that's the kind of uh, yeah, picture mm-hmm. that we build and culture that we build here in Every Nation Victory. So. Uh, this is great. And I think it's going back to what Pastor Jansen said earlier. Uh, in changes and transitions, it's really the hardest part and maybe one of the most important part is the people. And it's how God speaks to His people. It's how the people are affected. And I guess with these changes that are happening, what are the kinds of... like? If we look at the other side, Kanina, we just talked about how changes are for the leaders. What about for the people who are going to be affected by the changes? Do you like expect uh, how they are going to be affected by the change? Oh, yes, of course, definitely. In any transition, let's say, uh, at the very least, there are already four groups of people that are affected. So let me start. Let's say, you, you're, let's say, Ryan, let's... Mm-hmm. let's Let's pretend ikaw yan. you're transitioning into a new role. Mm-hmm. Number one, it's you. You're affected by it. Pangalawa, your family is affected by it. Pangatlo, the department, the ministry, or the group that you are with or leading or you're a part of, they're affected. And fourth, the department or ministry that you're getting into, the group that you're joining into, is also affected by that transition. A what if, let's say you are leaving and then someone is filling in your role mm-hmm. and then you are taking over another person's role and then you multiply it. So 12 at the very least in that simple transition, there are already 12 groups of people affected. Which means in any role change, in any transition, we have to prioritize people. Mm-hmm. And this is where leadership comes in. Kasi nga, di ba, sabi nga kanina ni Pastor Gilbert, yung sa management side, organizational charge, madali na yung part na yun eh. But leadership is vital in the transition because 
it's it is what will help people. And when you say leadership, I'm talking about the vision casting. It is where we remind them of the mission. It is where we make sense of all the changes. It may be difficult. Yeah, that's one concern. But we have to make them realize that there's meaning to this. There is a purpose of God into this. And it has to make sense to them. Mm-hmm. And plus so many other leadership factors. Kaya, yun nga, because it's people, leadership is integral mm-hmm. in any transition. Oh. Beautiful, Pastor Jansen. Okay, apat. Kaya ko lang nalilig yan. I'm thinking, if I, I might add, the leader that's coming up, going out that you're gonna mm-hmm. replace, wow, that's yeah. also another part. So, ang dami talaga, people get affected by that. And as I've said kanina, change always entails a sense of loss. So not only would you feel it, but the people right. you're gonna lead when you get in there, mm-hmm. they feel the sense of love. Even though they welcome you, the yeah. even yeah. though they love yeah. you and they want you to be there, but there's a sense of loss. So that's where the transition comes in. Yeah. Make sure you transition so well that the change becomes effective. And a lot of that, Pastor Jan said, it's people. It's loving people through transition. It's walking it out with them. It's having conversations with them. It's listening to them. It's walking it out with them. It's praying with them. It's uh, There's a lot. So the bigger the group, the longer the transition becomes. The smaller yeah. it is, the shorter the transition is. Yeah. Wow. And not to forget, Ryan, yung ano pa, ikaw mismo, the person mm-hmm. transitioning. And this is where this principle counts. Your response is your responsibility. Yeah. Wow. Scripturally, sinabi ni Paul yun, yeah. when he was transitioning out of, out of Ephesus, Ephesus and he was leaving the church to the leadership of the elders, mm-hmm. or the efficient elders, he said in Acts 20, 28, keep watch over yourselves and the flock of which mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit has made you overseers of. Ang ganda, yung in that, that sentence or in that verse, may process ngang napakita si Apostol Pablo. Sabi niya, keep watch over yourselves. Mm-hmm. Kasi pag nagawa mo yan, then you can keep watch over the church that the Holy Spirit has made you overseers of. So una then you have to be responsible for your own well-being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we cannot expect it from others. I cannot... Yeah, boss ko si Pastor Gilbert, but I cannot... Pastor Gilbert naman, di mo naman ako kinakausap dito sa transition ko. Kailangan mo ba ako kinamusta? I cannot do that. Because he himself, my goodness, I cannot imagine the weight of the leadership and the ministry aside from the work. Dalawa yun, mm-hmm. weight and work. Na hinahandle niya. But my response to this transition is my responsibility. So I have to make way and be assertive and yeah. look for ways to talk to people. Mm. Talk to him, talk to other pastors. Earlier, I was just talking to Pastor Ariel and it wasn't, hindi kami nag-set ng meeting, but we were just conversing. Oh, kamusta ka na? Ano mm-hmm. sa'yo? Yung kami lang dalawa, bilang yeah. pareho kami ng transition. So again, I think I think that's a key principle. Our response is our responsibility. Wow. I I love that. Kasi, um, so it's okay to be assertive and just really in say getting, where things are. Yeah, and assertive and trying to get help if you yeah. need help instead of waiting and if it doesn't come, we blame. Yeah, that's the <laughs> natural mad. response. Yeah. So, <laughs> ganto na kasi ngayon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, that's true. I, I mean, but we can be assertive and just say, yeah. so this is, I know, how can you help? How can yeah. I help? Yes. And it, it's okay to be assertive. It's okay to uh, ask questions. But what if, for example lang naman, uh, just in case, like you said a while ago, the leaders, kayo pa, Pastor Gilbert, Pastor Ariel, Pastor Michael, you all like had a sensing uh, God was speaking to you. It was Pastor Jansen. Pastor Jansen, you mentioned God was speaking to you as well. What if I'm the one on the other side, for example, and I feel like, but I feel like this is where God is leading and you're not the one or uh, I'm, like, I'm, a, I'm a bit hesitant to change. Uh, I'm in a different place. How do you respond to that? 
like for example, I, Pastor Jansen, I talk to you like, yeah, Ryan, we feel like it's time for you to move, change, and go to this yes. department or something. And then you said, I don't think so. Yes, I don't think that's God speaking to me that way. Yeah, um, and the other way around. If Pastor Jansen gets a response that we don't think that's the one for you, <laughs> Pastor uh, Jansen. Uh, Meaning, pag sinabi ko, Pastor Gilbert, I think God is speaking to me to be in Alabang. Tapos sabi ni Pastor Gilbert, ah, yeah, so How do from, you respond you know, from to this? From the leader uh, to the one yes. being led. Yeah. If you've been walking with us, working with us, hearing God together with us for a number of years, I mean, you're... Because I will never go to my two-year-old. Right. <laughs> me and my... Uh, Alonzo, you're two. We heard God mm-hmm. that you will go into this school. I don't think so, ma'am. I will not go to school. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. You go to school. Wow. That's the same thing, right? But if Alonso is already 15 and 16, yeah, we'll have a conversation. Mm-hmm. And if you say no and that's not God, we will respect that. And then we'll hear again and we'll talk again. and we'll. So we will not force you. So that's how we lead here for those staff and <laughs> that are here. That's how we lead. So that's on the leadership person. Wow. So that's why with Pastor Jansen, if we heard God and he says no, then we will respect that. And we would say, okay, well, you remain where you're at. In the same way, pag yun nga, yung sa example mo, Ryan, Ikaw yung if led. Pastor Gilbert tells me, ah, hindi, hindi ko yung sa Alabang, mm-hmm. I'd respect that as well. Wow. Meaning, I believe the key attitude for us in ministry is that first and foremost, of course, we trust God. Mm-hmm. If we trust God, we trust the leaders that He has set before us. If, let's say, our leaders make a mistake, it's between yeah. them and God. They're answerable in fact, to they're God. Answerable to God wow. In the same way that I am. So my responsibility now and my response is to trust God by trusting the leaders that God has set before me. If I don't trust the leaders that God has set before me, truth be told, there's no basis why we are in ministry. Might as well jump, sh- shift, and you know, find another work. Because again, wala nang sense siya. Wow. But I trust God. I trust the leaders that He has set. Wow. And I think that's healthy for any organization and that's critical for a church. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Um, if I don't trust my leader, then maybe this is not where I should be. Well, Maybe I should be in another church. Maybe I should be in another ministry because that's critical. It, 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 we're not going to do much for the kingdom if we don't mm-hmm. trust each other enough. Wow. And as I've said, as leaders, we would trust you. If you we hear this, you don't hear that, we'll trust you. And I love what he said. As we as, as leaders, he, so that's the kind of beautiful <laughs> picture of how this works. Mm-hmm. At a certain level of maturity, we will trust you. There are certain levels of maturity that we will <laughs> we will not give you that kind of trust in certain things. We entrust you to preach. We entrust you to do stuff. We entrust you to... But hearing God about change and transition, we will make that decision. But if you've grown up spiritually and we've had that level of working together and maturity, then we will trust you. So it's trust. Uh, you know, we had a leading together yeah. uh, podcast, I remember. We invest trust in each other. It, yeah. all, it goes back to that, even in change and transitions. Wow. So it's not just a black and white, uh, we don't trust you, we trust you. It's, it's over time, it's investing trust, yes. it's, uh, it's maybe levels of trust. Yes. Okay. It's growing in trust with each other. Yeah. But we start with trust and there are levels of trust in different scenarios that we can drop. Okay. So Pastor Jensen, uh, before we end, I know all of us go through transition and change and there might be people, I'm sure there are people who are, who are in a season of change or transition. Um, what can you, uh, what can you tell them? Give them transition, transition <laughs> or change hacks. 
<laughs> because yeah. you've been into so many. Yeah. Oh, sige. I, I like what you asked, Pastor Gilbert. Ano ba yung mga change hacks? Well, I don't think there are hacks. You'll really have to go through the process. Wow. Uh, if we shortcut it, I think we will be shortcutting a leadership journey and yeah. crucible that God wants us to go through. Uh, so, but if I can, ano lang, somehow give, uh, naks parang ano, no? Uh, uh, Dr. Phil. Dr. <laughs> Phil, uh, advice. Pero yeah, well, number one, again, because we are a church, sabi nga ni Pastor Gilbert, and God has given, our very existence is about the mission of God. So first and foremost, our transition should always be anchored and established by God. Mm. Meaning, we have to rely on God. Ito yung part na sinabi nga kanina ni Pastor Gilbert, di ba? yung may spiritual warfare. We tap on the means to His grace by praying, by fasting, by meditating, by reading His Word and relying on His Word. When Moses was transitioning from Egypt to to the promised land, kahit di siya nakapasok, he wrote a psalm, Psalm 90. Sabi niya, establish the work of my hands. It's really God who establishes the work of our hands. Yeah. And this is the work of God, so we rely on God. I Meaning, ito yung part na, oh nga, I need discernment, I need spiritual guidance, I need the word of God. So we go to the spiritual disciplines. Secondly, as we talked about, it's about the people. It's leadership, dahil people siya. So this also means that the first agenda to any change and transition should be about relationships and unity. Mm. Interesting, yun nga yung pinreach ni Pastor Gilbert kanina lang, di ba? It should be about building relationships. Let's say, for me, coming into Alabang, I cannot just barge in and say, oh, eto na ang 10-point agenda ko. Ha? Eto na yung mga bagong gagawin natin. Ha? I mean, end of the day, sino ba ako? Pangalawa, it just simply means that if I come in with a bunch of new strategies, it's like telling them whatever they heard from God when mm-hmm. they planned for it strategically, mali yun. Kasi oh. here am I coming in with brand new things. Nagkamali sila ng pagdinig sa Panginoon. Eh, hindi naman eh. So I cannot be, you know, be prideful in that way and come in na parang may bago na tayong gagawin. No, I'm coming in there. I'll build relationships first. Because I trust the very people whom God has set to be with me. And narinig nila din si Lord. So I'm sure, dahil pareho lang kami ng Diyos, ipapaalam din na akin, sa akin ni Lord yun kung ano yung narinig nila kay Lord. Eh. And we'll just work towards it. So first agenda for me is to build relationships. Let's say you're a leader coming into a new organization. Or let's say, yun nga, going to my example now. Truth be told, I'm coming in, si Pastor Ariel ang tatay nila. Mm-hmm. I'm coming in, stepfather lang ako. Anything I do na new, baka sabihin, bakit? Nagkamali ba yung tatay namin? Mm. So I cannot do that. I want to honor Ariel. So I'm coming in, stepfather, I'll just build relationships first mm-hmm. and earn that leadership spot in their hearts mm-hmm. to the point na, okay, ah, si Pastor Jansen na nga ang senior pastor namin. But I have to work towards it wow. by building relationships with them. Wow. Unity is important because it's God's people. Psalm 133. Three verses lang in Psalm 133, but it talks about unity. First verse, how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It's mm-hmm. unity. Second verse speaks of anointing. Third verse speaks of God's blessing. If we put all three verses together, it simply means that when we are united, whatever we come up with, God will anoint it. And God will bless it. Mm-hmm. So whether it's a great strategy or an old one, or a passe one, let's say. But when we're united as a brethren, God is God. He can anoint that and He can bless that. So it's about people. We build relationships. We seek unity first. No? Wow. And siguro last na lang, Pastor Gilbert and Ryan, 
to the person when you are transitioning. I think so. It's about God. It's about the people that you're with, and it's about you yourself. And I think the best response was exemplified by Jesus Christ, even John the Baptist. When, G, when, when John the Baptist was transitioning because he paved the way for Jesus Christ, and when Jesus arrives, he behold, the Lamb of God has come, you know, the Savior of the world. Tapos sabi niya, I must now decrease. He must increase. So it's a posture of humility. See, Jesus Christ then, diba? all the more. His transition and change from preacher minister to now the Savior of the world. When he was about to die on the cross, what did he do? He humbled himself to the Father. He was in Gethsemane. Lord, take this cup away from me, but not my will. Let your will be done. Both of them displayed a posture of humility. And I think for all of us transitioning, that's the best posture. Posture of humility. So. Nice. <laughs> wow. If, if I may, I, I know you mentioned the last one was about you, but it, it, from it, what it sounds like to me, a lot of that is none about the leader. Yeah. It's about God's mission, the people yeah. of God, and even just redirecting everyone back to Jesus. Yeah. And, and for me, if with all the transitions that I've been through, um, on a very practical note, very similar to you, if you're in a transition, if you're in any kind of change, draw near to God. Wow. Change always has that sense of loss. And when you're in transition and change, insecurities come in. The only way you can be secure is when you hear God. Hear God. Draw near to God. Nothing beats that. Uh, second, focus on the mission of God. Like, like what Pastor Jansen have said, all transition, at least that we do, ideally would do transitions and changes here, is because to advance the mission of God. So third is to get support from people. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, you will, all of us would need support. Call a friend. Get a friend to pray for you. Yung ginawa ni Pastor Jansen. Wow. Kanina, Pastor Ariel, usap lang tayo. Kumustahan lang. Be in triathlon with someone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just get support from someone. Uh, because it's not going to be easy. Sabi nga ni Pastor Jansen, there's no short circuit circuiting the process. Go through it. It's not going to be easy. But if you have support from family, from friends, from the people that God has assigned you, I think we'll be able to do this. Uh, we'll get through change and transition in such a way that we're united, in such a way that we're honoring God with the way we wow. respond. Wow. Well, thank you, Pastor Gilbert. Dahil sinabi mo Pastor Gilbert, I'd like to take this opportunity then. Dahil I wanna, because of this recent transition, mag-file po ako ng leave ng dalawang linggo. Ah, hindi po, hindi po, hindi po approved to. Babakasyon lang po ako. Kanina, kanina mo pinafile na ngayon. Ewan ko, dinidead mo ako ng boss ko. Magbabayit na. Nagpapile ako ng dinidead mo. Lagi ko, ha? Anong file finally? More bricks! More bricks! Less straw! Thank you, Pastor Jensen. Thank you, Pastor Jensen. Thank you, Pastor Gilbert. We enjoyed this. We learned a lot, but we enjoyed this as always talking to you. So. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so Same much. Kamera, dami namin natutunan. And of, of course, ano, thank you everyone for joining us. And we have discussion questions in the description box. So if you would like to discuss it with your victory groups. And if this has been helpful for you, if this has been helping you lead together with others, please follow us on Spotify on Instagram, on TikTok. And we'll see you again in the next episode of Leading Together. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>